please start hi everybody welcome to live session today i am dr jagan mohan reddy surgical gastroenterologist i am specialized in gastrointestinal oncology i am from spectra hospitals hyderabad today happened to be a cancer day on this eve of cancer day actually the theme of cancer day for 2022 is closing the care gap so what exactly you mean by this there are many global disparities occurring in view of the treatment of cancer treatment so in order to close all these gaps the team is to recognize those gaps and rectify it so that equality of cancer care is being reached to the downtrodden people even in undeveloped countries so the first and foremost theme of this cancer day is to recognize the gaps rectify it and understand it analyzing it and from there taking forward for the prevention of cancer so here lies the importance of awareness of various cancerous conditions and my topic today to discuss with you is stomach cancer in common language for example in medical terms it is known as gastric cancer so the stomach cancer is one of the commonest cause which we listen today especially it is more highest incidence in asian countries like japan and china but with the growing urbanization and the western culture which we are adopting nowadays and due to the sedentary lifestyle this is on increasing trend even in india about 40000 new cases is being reported in the previous year of stomach cancer so in order to have the awareness of stomach cancer what exactly it is how do the presentation because any cancer early detection will make lives better and will have good prognosis so coming to stomach cancer what are the risk factors or generally most of the cancers are related to lifestyle modifications so stomach cancer is not new to such kind of risk factors smoking is one of the major risk factor for predisposing to stomach cancer apart from smoking other lifestyle habits like having consumption of processed foods nowadays with the advent of urbanization what we are having we are more fond of taking junk foods processed foods and smoked foods and even salted fish apart from this the other risk factor which we are having nowadays obesity which is a, again a big pandemic although we are having covid pandemic in the recent times obesity is one another risk factor which world is fighting with and with the awareness nowadays i could see lot of youngsters having more awareness about lifestyle modification and that is very heartening to see especially in urban areas and I hope this message will go on go on so that the burden of cancer will reduce over a period of time and stomach cancer happens to be in fact a third most common leading cause of death and it is a fifth most common cancer in the global burden and apart from this risk factors you have some genetic factors also to come into the role of the play there is an entity called hereditary diffuse gastric cancer and you can have whenever you have a genetic analysis if at all a person is possessed to have e cadherin mutation though it is a medical term whenever you come around such scenarios usually you should take a opinion of surgical gastroenterologist or a ga onco surgeon to further proceed and this why this genetic factors is very important because nowadays i am seeing even in young personalities the stomach cancer sign being detected previously they were known to be even today the incidence above elderly years above 50 years of age is more prevalent but in the lightning or lighting time in the lightning of this incidence in even an younger population we should always be aware that stomach cancer can occur in even in the younger individuals thereby screening plays a major role in early detection and preventing stomach cancers and to lead a better life and coming to the presentation what symptoms do we usually patients walks to my clinic as you understand lot of patients have indigestion problem nowadays so people always tend to tell me that i am having some gas problem sir i am having some gastritis so what i meant to say is most commonly they are benign as you told it can be a small gastritis problem or it can be a small ulceration issue problem apart from that you can have even gallbladder issues and pancreatic issues which always get confused with the symptoms of stomach cancer usually stomach cancer have got a presentation which is usually benign most of the times in parallel with gastritis in early stages that is why here comes the picture of screening and detection at an early stage so this is where we should be aware whenever a patient has prolonged 
indigestion problems, prolonged uh, gastritis, bloating. It is always advisable to meet a gastroenterologist and get a screening endoscopy done so that it detects the cancer first and you will have always an option of detecting it in early thereby preventing such cancers. And apart from these symptoms, the major symptoms are patient can have vomitings and one more common symptom is usually patients consume food. Previously, he used to have some four chapatis, three chapatis. But when it comes down, he suddenly notices he can his tummy is full once he consumes about one chapati something. So, this term in medical terms, it is called early satiety. So, whenever you feel early satiety, this is where again you need to be alert to meet a gastroenterologist. Apart from this, the other signs are some unexplained anemia. What do you mean by anemia? Anemia is something when you have a low hemoglobin and you do not have any evident reason for it. Then there is a scenario again you should suspect stomach cancer apart from other reasons whatever are available on it. So once your symptoms are identified, once you have a high index of suspicion for uh, stomach cancer, the next option is to detect it. So how are you going to do it? One simple investigation which is very cost effective and acts as a good screening procedure for stomach cancer, it is an upper GI endoscopy. So endoscopy, lot of people has got scary towards endoscopy. Endoscopy is a simple procedure, though I agree it has got little discomfort for 1 to 2 minutes. But with the sophistications which are having, it is a simpler procedure. Here it visualizes our food pipe, that means our stomach where it stores food and gets digested. So that visualizes that inner lining of our stomach and it could easily visualize the growths which are there. And at the same time, it helps us to take some pieces of tissue for biopsy and which will be sent to histopathological examination. So this endoscopy plays a major role in early detection when you have symptoms. I have seen lot of people, people come with a vague symptoms. Once we do endoscopy, we find some growths inside. So this is where this endoscopy is very advantageous because it is a simple procedure, easily executed nowadays. And with the advent of sophistications or with the advent of diagnostic centers have come up, Nowadays, this investigation is available in most of the diagnostic center. So, everyone should avail such opportunity to detect it an early so that to avoid uh, catastrophes. So, apart from once you make it confirm a diagnosis, whether it is a cancer or a benign lesion. So, once you confirm the diagnosis, the next step is to stage a cancer like any other cancers. So, what exactly you mean by stage? I would like to simplify things here. Whenever you have a lesion or a growth which is limited to stomach, in the stomach inner layers, superficial layers, so usually it comes under early stage of cancer. When it involves the middle layers of stomach, you can tell further thing that comes around stage 2. Whereas in stage 3, little surrounding area of stomach, once it is stage 4, it spreads to the distant areas in our body. So this usually to stage the disease, the investigations what we have in our hands is usually Contrast enhanced CT scan, in rarely in few selective cases, we would like to go for even PET CT, which is available nowadays. And this PET CT will tell whether it has spread to distant areas, thereby assessing him much better. So when you come to this stage, uh, early stage of disease, we have got another advanced sophistication nowadays. With the help of endoscopic ultrasound, we will be able to clearly delineate whether that growth is involved in superficial layers or little more than that. When it involves superficial layers, even the therapy nowadays have come like endoscopically itself you can remove that growth. So apart from that when it involves stomach, basing on the lesion of the stomach. For example, stomach will have three parts. One is upper part, middle part and lower part. Usually most commonly it occurs in the lower and middle part. So usually half of the stomach will be removed or a partial half of the stomach will be removed. That is known as subtotal gastrectomy or distal gastrectomy. And there are conditions where it involves the entire stomach that is called as linitis plastica and especially in predisposing factors like mini Trier's disease or hereditary cancer. So, you will have a diffuse gastric cancer that means entire stomach is involved. Here we need to take out entire stomach that is known as total gastrectomy and whenever you take out stomach it is not only the stomach which we take out the draining areas that is lymph nodes they call it. So, the draining areas is removed en block removal with the stomach areas. This is generally termed as radical gastrectomy or subtotal gastrectomy. And the way you perform, how do you perform? Nowadays, open procedures are there conventionally and with the advancements nowadays we are doing lot of laparoscopic procedures nowadays. 
where the recovery is miraculous, you will have the patients on board with fluids and all within three, four days, he'll be able to get discharged. And apart from that, the recovery is good. And the oncological clearance is being equivalent with the open conventional methods. And with the advances made and future is going to be robotic, gastrectomies are also being already being performed here in our centers. So with the advent of advocacy, I think this research is going to be further improved in the best interest of the patient and the outcomes of the patients. So apart, once this comes to stage three, as I have told you, when around stomach areas and whenever you have beyond areas, here comes a multidisciplinary approach. Usually the arms of any cancer therapy will be primary surgery. Surgery, especially in this case of stomach cancer, the surgical treatment is the main best treatment because whenever you do surgery, especially in early stage cancers are stage one and stage two. Early stage, it almost accounts about 90% of the cancers. Nine, uh, the cancers, when you do it in the early stage, 90% it has got prognostic value. But it, when it comes down to middle layers and all, you'll have 30 to 50%. Whereas in distant stage four and all, it comes down up to 4%. So the importance of early detection, screening of cancer, and getting on time an expert consultation will play a big role in fighting against this cancer. As I have been telling about the arms you have is chemotherapy and you have a radiotherapy. This chemotherapy nowadays, again, it a lot of research is going on this chemotherapy. Whenever you see a bigger growth, which you feel it is not suitable for surgery therapy, we initially try, especially in the stage three patients, a chemotherapy before surgical treatment. So this is known as neoadjuvant chemotherapy. This has got a big role. Several research articles are being done on this neoadjuvant chemotherapy and there are positive results. Once we downstage this, we are able to resect or uh, do surgery for that patients and oncological results are very welcoming compared to without giving chemotherapy and resecting such big tumors. And in stage four, it is only the palliative therapy but here, the role of emotional support, social support, and multidisciplinary will play a major role in prolonging the life of the patient and maintaining the mentality of the patient in a proper space. So apart from this radiotherapy and chemotherapy, the other advances in stomach cancer are immunotherapy. What exactly you mean by immunotherapy? Usually, our immune defense mechanisms will fight against the... Uh, will have a deficient or difficulty in identifying the cancer cells and fighting against this. Here in this process, immunotherapy has come in a big way in prolonging the life of the patient. And this is, and lot of research is going on, molecular research is going on in immunotherapy. And going forward, finally, how do you follow up the patient once surgery is done? Once surgery is done, we will always remove the histopathological report. And once after reviewing the histopathological report, based on that, a family counseling is very important in view of the prognosis of the patient. We always feel once a surgery is done, surgery is done. But once the surgery is done, it is always 75% of the work is done in fighting the cancer. The other 25%, as I told, it all rests on the biopsy report and following it up, having good family counseling. And if at all chemotherapy is required, it is always uh, our you know, surgeon and the team's responsibility to see that the chemotherapy is done by convincing the patient. And before going for chemotherapy, anyhow, our cardiac workup and all will be done. We'll be assessing the risk of the patient and then counseling them going towards the chemotherapy and completing the therapy will be our final goal to achieve cancer-free survival rates and to improve the survival rates of the patient. Most of the patients, usually they will be defaulting chemotherapy they will be continuing chemotherapy for one or two cycles. So it is imperative to stress upon the patients that to complete the chemotherapy cycles and fight out against the cancer. And finally, to conclude this session, I would like to tell today one, as I told, we'll follow that theme of uh, cancer uh, 2022. So when you have this theme in mind, we should always identify the gaps in second tier cities. And I hope now India is definitely advancing towards the advanced medical care and especially our Hyderabad is a medical uh, hub which we are creating nowadays. There is nothing short of our Hyderabad nowadays. We are doing our best oncological care in our Apollo hospitals. And going forward, we are looking much research coming towards it, towards the prevention. 
finally to conclude this session early detection whenever you find some symptoms please take an exp expert opinion we will have an early detection so that we will aim and fight towards a cancer in preventing at least or at least reducing the burden of the cancer disease of stomach cancer and hope everyone stays safe in this covid environment we are looking towards our cancer free world thank you